Good morning. I'm State Senator Holly Mitchell representing the 30th Senate District. Uh, as you all know, Saturday marked the 37th anniversary of Prop 13, California's landmark law that capped all property tax increases at 2% a year. For homeowners and renters, Prop 13 was an extraordinary victory and a huge relief that helped millions, especially those on fixed incomes. Uh, I was teasing Senator Hancock by saying I wasn't yet a voting age when Prop 13 passed. I think I was in the seventh grade. But it is clearly one of the earliest memories I have of real engagement and understanding fundamentally what voting meant. And I, I had vague memories of like TV ads that talked about protecting grandma's home. And that was what I believe voters really thought they were doing in passing Prop 13, making sure that grandma uh, wouldn't be priced out of her home based on rising property taxes that would exceed grandma's pension and her savings. So today we're here, 37 years later, to talk about SCA 5, new legislation that will finally reform our commercial property tax system and most importantly, make it fair. The problems, again, are 30 plus years in the making. We have large corporations and wealthy commercial property investors that have used loopholes in the law to, abo to avoid paying their fair share. We have large multi-billion dollar corporations that actually have a competitive advantage over smaller startups simply based on when a property was purchased. In short, we have a few businesses that are benefiting from far lower taxes than their neighbors and competitors. And we see multiple examples of that in our districts across the state. And so that's what this legislation is about. Here's what it's not about, and I think that is critical as readers and all of us talk about Prop 13 reform. I think it's really important, specifically that the press clearly articulates what this effort is not about. It's not about homeowners, renters, or agricultural property. SCA 5 doesn't touch that at all. And it's not about raising property tax rates. In fact, when it comes to small businesses, this bill provides tax relief by reducing tangible personal property taxes on business equipment. We recognize that the vast majority of commercial property is assessed at or near fair market value. What we are looking to do is to take a to take those few that are benefiting from underassessment and bring them in line with everyone else. We, like I said, we all have examples in our own districts. I have an example, I believe, in Century City, where the Century Plaza Hotel is assessed at like 720 some odd dollars per square foot, and neighboring entities are far, far less. We're here today to restore fairness and restore common sense. I look forward to working with my colleague, uh, Senator Hancock, and others in the Senate as we move this bill forward. Senator Mitchell told you a little bit about uh, what this bill does. Uh, and we really need to also talk about why it matters and why it's so important for the state of California at this particular time. I have to say my own memory is introducing this bill uh, 12 years ago when I was a newcomer to the State Assembly. And it was a different discussion then, even though we were in a time of financial crisis. Uh, right now, we're in a time when we're trying to rebuild after the Great Recession. We have a property, we have a tax extension, Prop 30, that is about to run out. And we are looking at how to avoid another crisis financially in California. So we know Prop 13's goal was to protect homeowners, residential people. Um, it turned out that there was a big loophole, uh, one of those unintended consequences, so that big corporations, commercial and industrial property can restructure itself so it never has to pay taxes on the increased value of its land. Now, over time, this led to a great shift in who pays property taxes in California. Used to be, in 1977, when Prop 13 came up, about 50-50. 50% was paid by homeowners and 50% by commercial industrial property. Quite different now. 72% of the property taxes in California come from homeowners. 
and only 28% is paid by businesses and commercial development. <clears throat> what does that mean? That means that responsibility for the things we all need and use is falling on our families. These are things we all use, the roads, right? The schools, the fire trucks that come when we call, the police officers, all of those things. Businesses rely on them as much as homeowners, mm -hmm. but they are not paying their fair share. So it's time to change that, time to make it fair. It's fundamentally about equity, about how we all share in the responsibilities for the needs of our community. And people who are just wealthy and well politically connected can't opt out of that. It's a conversation we need to have in California. I want to point out the money will stay local. Mm -hmm. All of this money will be distributed in exactly the same way that the property tax is distributed now. And it brings in quite a lot of money. It brings in about $9 billion a year. There's a great study here from the University of Southern California. I hope that you will all read it. We're going to encourage everyone in the legislature to read it um, that shows how that happens. And think of the jobs that you could create, the infrastructure that could be repaired, the child care that could be restored, that we've been unable to restore in the last budget. All of that becomes possible by this, this measure. So this is a revenue issue, and it's also an ethical issue. And in the end, our choices up here are all moral choices and economic choices. This bill is for fair and equal treatment, and it addresses both of those issues so that we will all do well in this great state. And with me, with us today is Anthony Thigpen, who is heading up the coalition of organizations that make this a really substantially different uh, conversation and opportunity than we've had in the past. And I thank all of you for being here. Mm -hmm. Well, well, thank you. My name is Anthony Thickpin. I'm president of California Calls and a proud member of the Make It Fair Coalition. First, I want to, on behalf of all our coalition members, thank Senator Hancock and Mitchell for their leadership and courage in bringing this bill forward. As you know, this cause is not new. The inequities of our property tax code are decades in the making. And there, are hand, there have been a handful of efforts over the years to try to correct this. Um, Senator Hancock back in 2003, Senator Mitchell has been a champion for years on issues of equity and making California a fair place for everyone. So why is today different? Two reasons. As you know, this is a compounding problem. Even without this fix, this means a minority of commercial property owners pay a smaller share of revenue than homeowners. Lonnie mentioned the shift that has occurred uh, since 1978. And the problems compound from that. Because those homeowners pay less than their fair share, there's less invested in our communities, less invested in our kids, in our seniors, in our neighborhoods and schools. And we've reached a tipping point here. Public education, transportation, safety services, the safety net, all were designed to create opportunity. That opportunity can't be realized. So we know that there's been a generation or more of this equity. So the time now is for change. The second reason is that as long as I have been involved in these issues, I've never seen the energy and commitment being poured into this effort uh, around the state. We formally launched this coalition about a month ago. We already have 230 organizations actively involved in endorsing the effort, religious groups, neighbor groups, civil rights groups, unions, all stand together for change. And the cause began with these civil rights and neighbor groups. As they began to see the unfairness in their communities and how we need to fight to make it right. 
to make it fair. In addition, our coalition members have already trained over 2,300 grassroots leaders who in turn are gonna go out and talk to neighbors and congregations and coworkers and family members about these issues. Already in the last month, we've talked to almost 90,000 voters directly by phone and door to door with 65,000 expressing support for this change. So again, I wanna thank Senator Hancock and Mitchell for standing up to make it fair. We know the reform won't be easy. We know and we expect a fight. We also know what's fair is fair and our success as a state depends on everyone contributing equally to make our state a great state. Thank you.